Hey guys, this is Matt with bleepandjeep.com. Today we've got a manifold gasket that we're going to change on a 2.5 liter Jeep YJ. But before we get started, don't forget to check out my website, bleepandjeep.com. I've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff. Uh, we've also got t-shirts and hats there as well, so check it out and do subscribe below. Alright, so I've never changed the manifold gasket on a 2.5 liter, but I'm sure it's not much different than the uh, 4.0, the straight 6 on my Cherokee. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is start removing some items so I can get down to the, uh, the manifold. Let's get started. <sighs> Alright, so here's the 2.5 liter. It's very similar to the straight 6 um, in that the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold are together on the uh, right side here, or the driver's side here. Um, so I need to take some stuff off so I can get down there to it. I'm not sure exactly what I need to take off because I'm not that familiar with this engine. But uh, the first thing that you should do, and that I'm going to do as well, is just to take a lot of pictures with my camera phone, just so that I'll know where everything goes back. Alright, so I didn't show a few things there, otherwise this video would be 24 hours long, but basically what I've done is started to disconnect all of the uh, hoses and wires and things that are connected to the throttle body and the intake manifold. Now, you probably don't need to take the throttle body completely out of the Jeep, but just loosen up enough things that you can pull it up and set it to the side while you're working on the rest. Some of the things I've disconnected are the uh, water lines here, I've disconnected some of the sensor fittings, some of the air uh, vacuum lines, and just anything and everything that would keep me from setting this aside, anything that would be too tight for me to pull this over about six inches and up and out of the way. Now the next thing I'm going to do is try to remove this throttle body. Um, now if you're really good you might be able to get in there and pull everything off in one piece, uh, slip your new gasket in there and bolt it back together. But if you're going to be replacing the intake manifold or the uh, header then you're going to need to uh, get deep in there and remove all this stuff anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. So this throttle body is a little bit hard to get to, but after I remove that piece there, I should be able to get down here to four bolts that remove it. There's one in here that's going to be hard to get to. I'm not sure how I can get to that, but I'll start with these other three. Alright, so I finally got the four nuts off of the intake manifold here. Uh, there's two of them that are really hard to get to, the one on this side and the one on this side. I just used a, a wrench like this to get to this one over here. And I had to use a setup like this to get to the one on the other side, uh, a swivel setup. And that seemed to be half inch instead of 13 millimeters, so that's kind of weird. Um, but after I got that off, there's still one bracket right here. You remove that uh, bolt from this bracket. And now it's pretty much free except for a few more lines that I need to disconnect, like the gas lines uh, coming in here. And they're also connected to the intake manifold down here. And after I get those few more lines disconnected here, I should be able to pull this up and out. Alright, now I can just pull on this and kind of look and see what's still connected here. That's the uh, temperature cinder right there. Gas lines are a bit hard, so they're not going to move very far. Looks like this line could be pulled here. <coughs> to get some pliers for that. And there's a few more uh, wires, connectors here that can be pulled to give me a little bit more room. All 
All right, so I've pulled that up and out of the way just enough um, where I can work down in here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and zip tie that up out of the way. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna lift this over and remove anything I can see that is still holding the uh, intake manifold in place. And as far as I can tell, it's just this one uh, vacuum bracket back here that's still attached. And now I'm in a tight spot, but hopefully if I remove that, I'll be able to uh, move the intake manifold back just enough to get that new piece in there. All right, so now theoretically I should be able to loosen all of these uh, manifold bolts and the thing will slide back. Now there's looks like on this one there's three bolts on top and four on the bottom, but uh, one of them is broken off inside there, so we'll have to fix that when we get down to it. Uh, I believe this is a 14 millimeter right here. That's on there good. All right, now I'm using a small extension just to get down in here and onto those back, uh, those bottom bolts here. Okay, I've got all six bolts loose and uh, hopefully with any luck this thing will just pop right off. Let's give it a shot. Yep, it did and Looks like that gasket is a mess. It's even missing right here. Um, now if your if your exhaust is pretty tight, you might want to loosen up the bottom of the uh, exhaust manifold. There's a little donut gasket down there and you could uh, take that off, but more than likely that's going to be rusted shut. Um, but this seems to work. Um, for now we'll just pull this back as far as we can and uh, replace the gasket. Alright, so I've used a crowbar. I just wedged it right in here and I pulled the everything back and there's a, a bolt. On all of these there was a, a bolt that went into the motor but on the very last one there's a bolt that comes out of the motor, motor with a nut on it. So I just rested everything on that so it'll pull it back and now what I'm going to do is just remove the gasket. When I was looking in here I also noticed that it is really nasty and gross in here and this is going to need to be cleaned up pretty good. Now if you're going to be replacing the uh, exhaust manifold or the intake manifold you'll need to go ahead and spend some more time removing all of these lines and anything that's attached to it so that you can get the whole thing out and replace it. But for me uh, just replacing the gasket, I think uh, this will probably be plenty. And then I'll just go ahead now and clean up the sides here and make everything nice and shiny looking. And then we'll put the new gasket in. But first I need to figure out what I'm going to do about that bolt that's broken up right here. Check this out. This doesn't really have anything to do with what, what you're doing, but uh, this is the old gasket I pulled out. And this is the correct new gasket. So uh, I don't know what was going on, but they didn't even have the right gasket in there. And four of the ports, all of the exhaust ports are missing on this uh, old gasket I just pulled out. Okay, so I've cleaned it as best I can with paper towels. And now what I'm going to do is take some sandpaper and I'll just put it in here and clean up the rest. All right, so I got it cleaned up pretty good with sandpaper, and now it's time to put the gasket on. If you look down here, there's some solid pins that fit into these holes on the gasket, and uh, that's what you're going to use to line it up. Before I can do that, though, I need to pull it back far enough to get it over that bolt on the end. And that's it. 
Now we can put everything back together. If you haven't noticed yet, there's two separate pieces here. Uh, one is the exhaust manifold and one is the intake manifold, but they both fit together uh, pretty seamlessly here and the bolts hold them both uh, in. And there's also just one gasket for the two of them. Now I'm going to slide it back over and see if I can get everything lined back up. Alright, I'm having some trouble getting everything lined up perfectly. It's right there, but I just can't quite get the bolt started. I'm trying to get this middle one in first and then work my way out. What I'm going to try to do is jack it up just a little bit from the bottom with the floor jack. That's a little bit too high. Alright, that was a real pain in the ass, but I was finally able to get that middle bolt in. Now I'm going to see if I can get the other ones in here. This seems to be the hardest part of the whole process is lining everything up here. Now there is an order that you're supposed to do whenever you tighten this thing down. And uh, as you can see right here, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kind of a back and forth pattern starting with number one. And you're supposed to torque those down to 23 foot pounds. And that's on the 2.5 liter. On the 4.0, it's a little bit different. On the 4.0, there's a couple more bolts. And uh, that goes one starting at the top in the middle, two, three, and then four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that's for uh, the 4.0 through 1990. And then 91 to 96 is, in, is uh, different still. Here's the one for the 91 to 96. That goes one, two, three, and then four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That one's really complicated. Alright, so I finally got everything lined back up on the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold and I got everything bolted back in. That was quite a booger to do. I also couldn't get that bolt extracted here that had broke off inside the engine block, so I devised this little uh, bracket here. There's an empty bolt hole here for uh, I believe that's for lifting the motor out and I threaded a bolt in there with this angle piece that clamps down as you um, screw that bolt in so hopefully that will hold that in place I know it's not ideal but um, I broke off my extractor trying to get that out of there so that's the best I can do for right now and now all that's left is to put everything back together basically that just includes bringing everything down plugging up all the wires and the connections back together and uh, then we'll be done alright so I'll just cut this zip tie here and I'll bring this back into place here now I've got all of these bolts and nuts that I used to take everything apart and what I'll try to do is remember where these went. Good luck with that. So I believe the first thing I should do is probably put the throttle body back where it belongs. Alright, I've got the throttle body back in place and I, uh, to do that I had to get these lines on the back in place. There's a little nut that needs to go under the here. I probably should have done that beforehand but I think I can still manage. And then the four nuts that go on the throttle body itself. And then this bracket here, I'll need to put the uh, bolt in there. And then I'll just need to connect all the hoses and the plugs here. All right, I've gotten most of the bolts back in place, but before I tighten everything down, I just wanna make sure that uh, all these wires are will plug back up. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because if I were to actually have one of these wires under the throttle body the wrong way, it might not uh, be able to plug back up in the right spot. So I want to make sure all my hoses uh, plug back up before I bolt everything down. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure I've got all the hoses and all the wires um, back where they need to go. Um, now I can bolt everything back down. I am missing uh, the location of this one bolt, and I forget where I took that off, but I'm sure I'll find it somewhere around here eventually. But uh, for now, I can start bolting down everything, and we'll be finished shortly. Alright, we're getting close. Now I keep double checking because I keep finding hoses that I missed. Um, but if you can't remember where something goes, remember that you have pictures of it that you should have taken before you took it all apart. So, uh, I think I've got it all now. Just make sure that you double check and triple check and then quadruple check that you have all of your connections on. And now this goes on here like this. And now the air box. And now we're done. At least I think so. You want to make sure that uh, all your throttle lines are working good. Check that all your vacuum lines are connected, all your fuel lines. Check that all your electrical connections are back together, that you haven't missed any uh, bolts or nuts. Looks like they're all accounted for in this case. And now we'll just give it a little test to make sure it runs. Alright, I checked it over and it looks like I do have a leak, but it's not up here. The leak is down there at the uh, where the header meets the exhaust pipe. And right there there's a little donut gasket. And I think what happened is since we moved the header around too much, uh, it kind of loosened up that donut gasket. Maybe it's old or something. So I just wanted to add that uh, if you do hear a leak after you're done, uh, go ahead and make sure that you've tightened these in the right sequence and that they are snug. And you can usually kind of hear or feel where the exhaust leak is coming from if you run your hand over it before it gets too hot. Uh, in this case, I've got a leak down there at that uh, donut gasket. So I'll let it cool off, go grab a, a gasket, and replace that. Alright, once you get it running, come over here and check, listen, make sure that you don't have any exhaust or intake leaks, and then you're set. Now this was kind of simple and kind of complicated. It was simple in that you're just taking everything apart and putting it right back together the way you found it, but it is very complicated to get all that stuff out and uh, get everything lined back up. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the website, bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff, and we've got hats and tees there as well. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Leave your comments below. Thanks.